Welcome back everyone. This is GTA Failure. In this video, we tackle the third of four Marty Chunks missions. So we left off right in here, disposing of the thieves and dropping off the car between the building and that truck. And then we'll head out and answer our third phone call. This is the mission, The Wife. So in the first video, uh, in the Marty Chalk's selection of missions, Marty was blaming the banker for his financial woes. And in, in the last video, Marty was blaming the thieves who he hired to, you know, cheat the insurance company out of money. And now he's blaming his wife. And I think that Marty just needs to look inward and realize that he's the problem. I mentioned this in the last video or maybe two videos ago, but like we need Dr. Phil here to, to get Marty to recognize that it, it shouldn't be pointing the finger at everybody else. It's, it's just all him. It's all Marty. Okay, so in this video, we pick up this particular Esperanto. We go pick up Mrs. Chunks, bring her back to the bitch and dog factory, and uh, Marty will dispose of her, and uh, probably uh, there'll be a new flavor of the month in terms of the dog food. And then we'll be told to take this car and dispose of it in the sea. Yeah, so different kinds of ways to get rid of the evidence in the first three missions for Marty. Uh, so in the first mission, we were supposed to take the car to the crusher to dispose of the evidence. And then in the second mission, we were supposed to take the car to the pay and spray. And apparently not any pay and spray because the one over in Staunton didn't do anything to progress the mission. Uh, and then in this uh, third mission, we're supposed to dispose of the evidence by uh, getting rid of the car in water, which is pretty cool. I appreciate the, um, you know, kind of uh, similar nature of all of Marty's missions, but that they changed it up uh, in each of these first three missions in terms of how you dispose of the evidence. <clears throat> so uh, I'll mention uh, just a little bit from the wiki here uh, as we... Uh, get to this unskippable part of this mission, um, is that uh, the uh, this mission is unlocked by the previous Marty mission, and it only unlocks the next Marty mission, the last Marty mission, which is called Her Lover. And uh, of course, there's a necessary death in this mission. Uh, the wiki points out all the deaths that are required. Uh, in this case, it's the the wife that needs to die. And I don't think I mentioned in the last video, but obviously the thieves both needed to die in order to pass the mission. And uh, the reward uh, for this mission is $3,000. Um, so here I'm showing you like my vanilla strategy. I, I go to this particular corner when I'm speed running this mission and I get the car up basically on four wheels and then I push it off and into the water and it's mission pass. And there's lots of water around and, and a bunch of what I'll experiment with this in this video is, uh, is trying to use different kinds of water in order to pass the mission. So here I got the bright idea to jump onto the car. Didn't go well, uh, but even if I had jumped on the car, I would have just been stranded there. Um, okay, so next up, we're going to start doing some of the uh, kind of mission fails and oddities. So of course, killing the wife leads to a mission fail. The wife's dead. Yes, she is Marty, and I thought that was the purpose of this mission. Uh, and uh, as usual, um, she has no idea who I am when I'm on foot or when I punch her in the face, and then we'll try getting in a different car, but these are all programmed exactly the same in terms of the folks that you pick up, but I'm just trying to be complete here. So she doesn't recognize me unless I'm in the particular vehicle, the Esperanto in this case. So we will pick her up in the Esperanto, it's fine. And then uh, I'm immediately starting the abandoning process. And I think it's probably the same radius for failure for abandoning all of the guys in the first three missions in this chain. You have left the wife behind. I have. And now we're going to blow up the car. Yep, the vehicle is wrecked. So just trying to show all the different mission fail states, all the different language you can get. Uh, okay, so uh, now uh, we've dropped off Mrs. Chunks, and then we're supposed to take the car and uh, dump it in some water. So I'm going to double speed this part here, but I decided to experiment with different water. And uh, the first water that I wanted is, uh, is the ocean, right? It's all, all ocean all around these islands. <clears throat> but I wanted to see if I could get into the ocean in a particular way. So here we almost drive off the 
the wall here, which would have been like, I guess, mission pass and then dying due to drowning. We'll see. Uh, but the water that I wanted was this water that you jump over on this unique jump. And I wasn't sure if the Esperanto had enough speed to make this jump. But for science, willing to put my life on the line, it is not really close. But mission pass before the eventual drowning of the hero, Claude. Okay, so that's good to know. So as soon as the car hits the water, you pass the mission. And it takes Claude a few seconds to drown, so you still get credit for passing. Okay, next attempt. Um, I wanted to know if uh, any body of water would be okay, so I decided to uh, take this car for a little spin. So uh, obviously all around the three islands is uh, lots of ocean, but I wanted to, uh, to try not ocean. And so we're going to use the flying cars cheat here. I didn't know if the Esperanto would have enough max speed, top speed to make it, but it did. Easy. So this isn't double speed. I think we might even put it up to quadruple speed here. Um, and uh, because the Esperanto had taken some damage, I decided uh, I still had some driving to do, so I have to take it to the paint spray. doesn't have any impact on the mission or anything. You don't fail because you paint sprayed the car, but I uh, just wanted it to have full health as we make our way over to the tunnel and head to shoreside in quadruple speed. <clears throat> so like I said, there's ocean everywhere, but there's uh, one particular lake that I know of, and it's called the Wichita Shores Lake. Do I have that right? Let's make sure we have that right. <clears throat> Sorry. It is called the Wichita Gardens Lake. Here we are, the Wichita Gardens Lake. It's Shoreside Vale. I have no idea where I came up with Wichita Shores. <clears throat> All right, so here we go, trying to see if I can dump this car in the very shallow and, uh, you know, uh, not at all inconspicuous car floating in a lake, uh, Wichita Gardens Lake. So I decided to uh, try to get it onto some kind of flat ground here. I don't know if the water is moving up and down more rapidly because it's kind of stormy at the moment. But here we go, mission passed, and nobody will ever see this car that we are trying to hide. Uh, I was kind of surprised to see the car sort of getting taken into the lake. Um, I decided to uh, try to get in and like back it out of the lake, which wasn't a great idea because I drowned, but we do get a nice little underwater shot of the car, which I didn't expect. So there's the car floating away. And I do think it's still drivable um, until it's, uh, you know, kind of flipped over. It's drivable. Okay, big cut. And you probably see where we're going with this, maybe. Um, but uh, what I did is I, um, I uh, dropped off Mrs. Uh, Chonks and she was killed. And then I uh, put the special car right here. And then I mega jumped over to Staunton and then I picked up this reefer, which is floating right here. And then I tried to drive the Esperanto onto the reefer. And so if you watched that video earlier in the series where we did car boat number one with the special colored Karuma, this is the same technique. Okay, so we got it on the second try. These attempts were annoying, by the way. It's like eight minutes per attempt or something like that. But I was surprised. I'm barely moving. Like, I thought that by accelerating in the car, we would just push the boat forward. Like, that's what happened in the Karuma. But we're hardly moving. I start trying to turn left, I turn right. The Esperanto is no Karuma in terms of its ability to handle a, uh, a boat. To drive a boat in an Esperanto, no good. Karuma is the way to go there. Okay, so I gave up on that after two, like, nine-minute attempts. Uh, but uh, here's my official attempt, my last attempt here to pass this mission in this video series. Uh, my ultimate goal, if I could have gotten the uh, car boat thing working there, was to, um, to beach the boat and the car onto some rock that was in the middle of the ocean, maybe the one that has the package on it to, just to the south of Portland Island. And then from there, I was going to get out of the car and then try to push the car by hand into the water. So the car would be floating uh, pretty far away from uh, mainland Portland and uh, just right next to that rock. And then I was hoping to push the boat, which I think was beached in my mind, uh, push it back into the water, hop into the boat and uh, head back to uh, the pier to get back onto Portland Island proper. But after two nine minute attempts and uh, no kinds of success, we gave up on that dream. It's okay, it's okay. Okay, uh, so uh, 
One thing uh, that I'll point out here uh, is that when you pass this mission, you get $3,000, which makes sense because when you pass the first Marty mission, you get a thousand bucks. The second Marty mission, you get 2000 bucks, although it says 3000 on the screen. And in this third Marty mission, you get 3000 bucks, although it says 2000 on the screen. So like I was saying before, my guess is that they uh, had originally um, uh, had swapped missions two and three in this chain that like, uh, the wife was first, it was the second mission, and then the thieves were the third mission, and then therefore the wife should give $2,000 and the thieves should give 3000 Then they changed them to this order, this final order that you see here in the, in the release game, and they did change the amount of money that was awarded. So this mission correctly awards 3000 the previous mission correctly awards 2000 but they just forgot to change the announcement on the screen. That's my best guess anyway. All right, and you might be questioning uh, my uh, uh, moral certitude, um, you know, like with all of these folks dying. So like, here's how I justify this in my mind. Um, so I am basically just an Uber. I'm an independent contractor. I pick people up from point A and I drop them off at point B. And if it happens at point B, they get brutally murdered in cold blood and turned into dog food. Well, that, that had nothing to do with me, right? I'm just the driver. So uh, here is how we're going to um, get this car to uh, get the mission to pass by putting the car in the water here. And it doesn't take much to get the car uh, far enough in the water to pass it. I can still drive this car. I guess I should have gone on a part of the beach that wasn't as steep because the Esperanto <laughs> does not handle this hill very well. I should have put this in like eight, eight times speed because it's so slow. But anyway, I just wanted to be able to drive this car a tiny bit more and put it in a place that puts me in a good spot to, to do our next mission in the next video. So the Esperanto is in theory uh, uh, in the ocean and destroyed, but it's not, I'm driving it. And so all of the evidence that Marty Jonks was hoping to erase is uh, right here in this car, which is just a tiny bit soggy, but still workable. So uh, my intention was to, uh, to bring this car back to Marty Chonks's compound and, uh, and just give the police all of the evidence that they need and even, even point this car in the right direction so that they know exactly who was responsible for the murder of Mrs. Chonks. Of course, my DNA is in this car too as the driver, but I think I'll be okay. All right, so there we go. Um, mission passed, and the police will know exactly what to do uh, when they see this vehicle here with all the evidence inside. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you real soon.